All right, we are in the final stretch of getting ready for our upcoming homeschool year. So today we're gonna to talk about planners for our homeschool and our homeschool schedule for the 2023-2024 school year. Hey guys, welcome back to my Practically Imperfect Life. Well, if you've been watching videos this summer, you've seen that I've done a lot of prep work for our upcoming homeschool year. I have our lesson plans done, I've made the workbooks, I've got worksheets copied, materials in drawers, kind of all of those big time consuming tasks. But one of the big things that I needed to wrap up for the summer was figuring out what our schedule was gonna be for the upcoming year. Now it's homeschooling, so you know, flexibility is kind of one of the big perks of this, but I wanted to have a rough idea of when were we gonna take breaks, when were our quarters scheduled to end, are we gonna hit that goal of being done by a certain point in May? And then also looking at how it is we wanted to kind of arrange our days, how were things gonna to need to change for this year? And then getting planners put together. So today I thought I would take you through kind of my thoughts on how I did scheduling and what we're gonna be doing for this year, and then show you our planner arrangements because I did some simplification with the planners this year, but um, I think it's gonna work out really well for what we've got going on. So for our schedule, you're gonna see me reference down into my planner here, and I'll show you this more closely when I talk about the planners in the second part of this video. But we are aiming to start the middle of August uh, with our homeschool. Now we live in a state where we're required to do 180 days of school, and we don't have to report that to the state or anything like that, but we do have to kind of keep track of our attendance. So if we're asked, we can show 180 days. So roughly 36 weeks of school is what we do. And I just keep track of it by the day since sometimes we will have, you know, three day weeks or four day weeks, depending on what we have going on. But we are aiming to start the middle of August and we do a five day school week. So we homeschool Monday through Friday on the regular. And as far as uh, other breaks, we don't take off like Labor Day and President's Day and you know, things like that. We, we just tend to work on those different days, but we will have, after about six weeks of school, we will be taking um, four days off that last week in September because we are gonna be doing our Texas road trip. So if you watched my August goals video, you heard me talk about this, I've been working in conjunction with my mom. We are planning to do a road trip down to Texas. We are gonna drive and we're gonna visit my brother and my sister-in-law and hit a couple of different cities um, kind of along the way, most of them will be in Texas. So my daughter can do some college tours. And at the same time, we're also gonna enjoy the things that there are to see there. And then our next kind of big break after that won't be till Thanksgiving. We don't take the whole week of Thanksgiving off. We typically just take the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, because I almost always host. So Wednesday is kind of a big prep day. We gotta clean the whole house and get a bunch of the food made and stuff. And then we have a couple of dates we already know about for our basketball team. So my kids play in a homeschool basketball league. And most of the time our games are in the evenings, but there are a couple times during the year where we have these tournaments and the tournaments will either be like a Thursday, Friday, Saturday or Friday, Saturday. And a lot of times they are out of town or they have games that happen during the day. And so because of that, we just don't homeschool on those days. So we already know that the first weekend of December, we will have a two day tournament that'll be out of town, which means we will take Friday off because we will be down in Indy for that day. We'll play again on Saturday. And then Christmas, we are gonna take two full weeks off this year. We have gone back and forth. Like we, we have done it where we took three weeks off. Um, in fact, my very first year homeschooling, I thought, yes, we're gonna take three weeks off. And my kids were like, we're bored. <laughs> like they, they were like, there's just not enough to do. So um, then we cut it down and we did one week off. Um, and that just didn't seem like enough. And so we've kind of done two weeks off the last couple of years. So we're gonna take off like half of the week before Christmas the whole week of Christmas and then half of the week after Christmas. And that kind of gets us through the first half of the school year. Um, other things that we decided to do is we did block off three days for a regional basketball tournament Tournament that always happens in February. We go down to Indy again and we just, we aren't gonna school on those days. And if we have, um, you know, like another tournament day come in, we've got that worked in. And then I am gonna plan a spring break. And we don't usually do that. We don't usually say, okay, we're just gonna take a week off. But we've been talking about wanting to do kind of a family vacation, going out, um, visiting some national parks, doing some hiking and things like that. And I thought, well, let's go ahead and let's put the spring break on the calendar. You know, if we need to flex which week it is, 
that's fine. We can do that. But at least it's on the calendar. We have a rough idea when we're planning to do it. And that will help as far as, you know, planning other things as well. So we are going to take a week long spring break in April. We just don't know the exact week, but at least it's worked into there. And then we should end our school year um, about the third week of May. Yeah, third week of May ish. And if we need to, you know, we can push it back out and we might get some things done earlier. And something to keep in mind too, is that my kids will start to kind of wrap up curriculum. Um, for example, math will get wrapped up most likely before the end of April. Um, things like vocabulary will wrap up early, writing assignments will wrap up early. So they really don't have like full days of school for most of the month of May. In fact, for most of May this past year, they really only had about I don't know, two and a half, three hours of high school level work to do. And that was including our group studies. And our group studies always take at least an hour to do. So, you know, in reality, they'll have more like half days of school for the month of May, which works out perfect because they're both competitive golfers. The weather gets nice in May, they can go out and they can do their golfing. So when I start to think about scheduling and when you might sit down and start to think about scheduling for your homeschool, I like to look at a full year calendar and I will start marking in things that I know right away. I start blocking off dates I know we need to be off. I will put in, I put like little notes on here and like the weeks that I work, cause I work seven days on, seven days off. Um, anything that I think might be pertinent to our schedule. And I will start off by just marking off dates we wanna take off. So you're gonna see like, I've got like boxes and places marking, maybe, there we go. Boxes marking when we are gonna have time off. And then I put our start date in there and I just started numbering the dates until I got to 180. Cause again, we have to do 180 days of school. And then from there I can mark when quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four are estimated to be done. Cause again, it's homeschooling. Flex around, you know, we kind of will adjust things as we need to through the school year. So that was kind of a big part was getting that whole schedule idea done. Now let's talk about planners. Now I know you're going to see a lot of homeschool channels talk about these like big brand new planners people get, you know, a lot of people do like the Erin Condren planners or like the well-planned life or they'll, they'll get a special planner that has everything in it. They'll do their family planning and their homeschool planning. Now I don't do that. I actually am a bullet journaler. Like bullet journaling is my favorite thing to do. This is the one that I got. Um, my husband gets these for me at Christmas time and then I basically kind of design it out for the year. And I've shown this briefly, but this is where I keep kind of all of my my personal stuff. So my my day-to-day -day calendar is in here. I keep track of like, I do like mood tracking, I do habit tracking, I have gratitude logs in there. I have reading logs in here where like I keep track of like book prompts and books that I've read. I have like books that are on my TBR and marking them off. And I love bullet journaling because I can customize it. You know, I can use kind of my artsy side of me, you know, and, and doodle things in here and whatnot. Um, I'm gonna just show you, let me just show you like a rough idea of what I mean by this. So um, I will do video planning pages. So what days do I plan to post what videos? What things do I need to do for those videos? I will track my mood. So I design a different page for each month for moods. I have my habits that I do on here as well. And then I will have a gratitude log. And then what I will do is I will create like calendar pages on here. So my calendar pages are where I put appointments, days that I'm taking off, days that I'm working when I have like a big cake order due. I mean, pretty much everything that you would put in like a normal planner, I put in here. What I don't put in here is my homeschool, like daily lessons and things like that. I will mark days that we're taking off of homeschool in here, but this is the one that travels around with me everywhere. I mean, it's small, it fits in my little backpack purse. I mean, this is this is like my favorite little thing. If you, if you love to be artsy, if you wanna get creative with things, if you love to draw and doodle and you know, you have a bunch of different things you wanna track and you want something you can really customize, Bullet journaling is a great way to do that. But for homeschooling, I do keep a separate planner. This one stays down here in the homeschool room because what I do is I will block off time to come down and work on homeschooling things. So if I know 
that, you know, I've got a block of time for homeschool prep. When I come downstairs, I'm going to be looking at my homeschool planner to see what is it that I need to be working on. When I'm down here doing homeschooling with the kids, I'm looking at this to see what things are we working on today. So this is my things for me to do homeschool planner. My bullet journal is my everything else planner. So this year I did get a new template. I got this from Erica Arnett. She um, has a website called Confessions of a Homeschooler. Fabulous site, wonderful resources. Every, if, especially if you have like, a, like preschool, kindergarten, younger elementary kids, she has created a whole bunch of different curriculum um, activities, some really nice ones that you can download and, and print out. But she also has a ton of different planners. She's also got a whole section of her website that's dedicated to craft stuff because um, she designs quilts and embroidery patterns and all kinds of stuff. Anyways, I purchased a new one from her. If you remember last year, I had one that was not dated. I still have that PDF on my computer and it was, you know, a horizontal one. I wanted an upright one this year and I wanted one that was dated just to, you know, take one step off of me. So this is the one that I got and it comes as a PDF with lots of different options of different pages. I just printed off the ones that I needed. So I did print off, you know, the full year page so I could figure out my scheduling. And then I print off for each month, there is an overview calendar and then a notes page as well. So I will, you know, take from that year long one, I will put some things onto here as far as like start dates, days off, um, if there's something like major that is going to be happening on a particular day, like, you know, Hey, we're doing a big cooking project on that day. I'll make that kind of note on the monthly overview. And then there is a two page spread for each week. So you can open it up and this would be great if you have students and you want to write in their assignments for them. You know, you can put in um, lots of different subjects on the side here. You can see there's plenty of spots for different subjects and then, you know, the days of the week. So if you wanted to make a copy of this for your student to do kind of their own planner, you definitely could. Um, now you're going to notice that mine looks pretty blank for right now. And you're like, wait, I thought you said you did all your lesson planning. Well, I did. I, I type in lesson plans onto an Excel sheet to have them all there. I do that because it's much easier to edit things online. I can copy and paste. And when I'm, you know, repeating a subject for my son, who's a year younger than my daughter, again, copy and paste and all of that stuff. And you'll see why that works when I talk about the kids planners. For me, in my planner, I'm not writing down every single thing my kids are doing. That's all on the Excel page. All I'm writing in my planner are the things that I am teaching that day or that I need to prepare for that day. So for example, so on my planner, you're gonna see for my subjects, I have Bible, German, Read Out Loud, um, Art, CC, which stands for Campfire Curriculums. I have English, Science, History, Food Science, and Other. So those are the topics that I have. So I teach Bible to my kids. We do that as a family subject. So which lesson are we doing that day from both our um, Daily Grace Co. devotional and from our CPH, like Bible history program? Um, which days are we doing Bible journaling so I can have that stuff out? For German, which lesson am I doing or what is it that I need to get prepared? Do I have worksheets I need to print out? Do I need to make copies of tests or quizzes? Is there an activity that I wanna have pulled? What is it I want to do for German that day? Read out loud, which novel are we on? Um, art for doing like a project or campfire curriculums because we're going to be rotating through those. And then for English, what is it that I am either doing directly with each of my students or what do I need to have pulled for them? Are they starting a new novel? Um, with my son, uh, we do what are called thinking zone pages or they're kind of like literary questions um, and those are assigned on different days of the week for him. So if I have one that day, I will make a note of it along with which page number it is on so I can make sure that I've read ahead and then I know what we're gonna be talking about. Um, or do they have a paper that is supposed to be turned in for me to edit and hand back, that kind of thing. So what is it that I'm responsible for doing in regards to that? Science, same deal. Um, 
I'm not doing like the the direct teaching of chemistry with my son this year like I did with my daughter and her friend last year but you know we're gonna do touch bases to make sure he is getting the material well um, for both of their science classes do I have a lab coming up that I need to pull the materials out for or make sure that we have them do they have a test coming up? Because when they have a test, typically I will plan to help quiz them and get them ready for that quiz, um, that test. Um, history or social studies, my son's doing world history, my daughter's doing government econ. Which books do I have to have pulled up for that week? Uh, reference books that I need to have tabbed because we, we like to have those ready. Do they have a cooking project? Do they have printables I need to do? Again, what is my responsibility to have done for that day? Food science, same deal, it's a guest hollow curriculum. Um, a lot of that's gonna be making sure that I have recipe ingredients on the days we need them so I can make sure that those are put on the grocery list. And then other would just be anything else that you know needs to be needs to be done. So that is what I put in my planner. Again, it's just what I'm responsible for either having prepped for them or what I'm gonna be teaching on that day. So it's not everything for my two students. Now, each of my kids does have their own planner though, and we are reusing the same type of planners that we had last year. So I had purchased these for my kids off of Amazon. I love these because they're three ring binders, but they fully fold out and open up and the kids can lay them flat. They really had wanted something that took up much less space on their desk and the fact that they can do this, they love that. Um, I didn't change a lot of things in terms of what's included in our planner, but I wanted to show you a couple of um, adjustments I did make. One thing I did for both of the kids is I printed off the full month pages, just like the ones you saw in my planner for, for each of them. So I have August through May in here for them. I've gone ahead and I've marked in things like the first day of school and when we are taking breaks and when certain holidays are. So for example, in December, December has quite a bit on there already. Their crossroad clash, basketball tournaments on there, Advent services at church, and when our Christmas break is. That's all in there. But I wanted to do this so they could also add in other things that they have going on. Uh, when basketball starts up, when do they have practices? When do they have games? Making notes of that. Um, both of them, um, my daughter is working, my son is in the process of applying for jobs. So what days do they work? What hours do they work? When do they have other things going on? And I thought I would include that in their school planner because a lot of times those are the things that are going to, you know, impact, you know, what hours they might be doing something. If they have a lesson they need to go to and it's at two o'clock, well, okay, you need to make sure you have everything done before you go, or you need to plan time in the evening to come back and get things done because I want them to take some ownership of those things. So I thought that might be helpful for them to have just a copy of the calendar in there. And then I do keep a couple of pages in page protectors for them. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of these in great detail. I'm just gonna explain what it is that they have. Um, so both of them have a copy of our grading scale. Now I have used a consistent grading scale for them ever since they started taking courses that count as high school credit. So when they were in eighth grade and they were taking classes that were gonna go on their transcript, I came up with a grading scale. That's the one we stuck with. We've made no changes to it. I did base this off one of our local school systems grading scales. I can't talk today. One of our local school systems grading scales. There we go. And so what it does is it explains what the letter grade is and what the percentage is up um, for that course. And then how you would put that in towards determining like a GPA, like what would it, what it would it be on a, you know, on a 4.0 scale and things like that. So I have that made up for them. They have a copy of it in there so they can reference that. Um, I also have a page in there that explains to them how to calculate their own GPA. Of course, I do that for them for their transcripts, but if they wanted to know kind of how things impact it, they can see that. I have um, requirements for graduation. Now we don't have requirements for graduating from homeschool in our state. But what I did is I provided them with the information from our state's um, education site, which explains what they would need to have if they were getting an academic honors diploma in our state. So what would our state require a student who is getting that type of diploma to have? Because that's really kind of where we based what type of courses we're doing and, and how many of each type of course we're doing. 
uh, that was what we used as the framework for just planning out our homeschool year. So that's explained in there for them as well. And then I have a page that provides information on special tests and when they are taken. So the PSAT, the SAT, and the ACT. What are those tests? Why are they important? When are they typically taken? And then there's information on CLEP exams as well. So I just keep that in here for them. Um, the other thing that they both have in here is their planning sheets by semester. So I'm not gonna show you these um, up close, but just know that they're the planning sheets for each of my students. Um, it explains like what courses they took in eighth grade for credit, which ones they've taken in each semester so far. Um, so my daughter has all of her courses for eighth, ninth, and 10th grade on there. My son has his ones for eighth and ninth grade on there, how many credits they've earned from it. And then as we you know, get into the future years, then we will keep filling those out so they can actually see what all has been included. Now, what I do for each of my kids then each day is I have a template. Um, I have an Excel, well, not an Excel. It's a Word document that I've, um, created and it's where I put in their assignments for the week. So I literally just copy things from my Excel planner and I paste it over on the day they're doing and then I print that out for the week. Um, I did a video, gosh, I think it was last year and I, I offered out, you know, anyone who emails me at my email address down in the description box, I am happy to share the documents I've created. I have, um, you know, I've seen lots of different versions of um, planners that you can edit. And I thought, you know, why pay for it if I can make it? And, you know, if you have some basic knowledge of Microsoft Word, you can easily create these templates. So I made a template that I used all of last year that allowed me to put in the assignments for my kids each day. Now I do that again because um, it's easier to edit things on the computer than it is to white them out or cross them out and things like that. And I want to keep things looking as neat as possible. Um, the other thing is that if something happens, like for example, let's say if I had planned for us to do lessons one through five in math on a given week and something happened on Wednesday and we had to push things back. Well, you know, then I'm just shifting things by a day within the planner. So if you watched my planning video last year, this is gonna look familiar. So this is what the planning sheets look like. It's got the day of the week and the date going up and down and then the subjects across the top and then the assignments for the days. So this is my son's for this year. And so you can see I've got different tasks kind of listed here for him to do each day for his math class and then for his chemistry class and his nutrition and fitness course. And then he will just go in and he will highlight them off as he gets them, them done. They, they both prefer to just highlight things off on there. Um, I do break down um, their English classes, at least for him, I break it down into literature, writing, and then grammar vocab, because there's just a few more components that kind of make up his courses. Um, so I have that all on there. You'll see actually the first week of school, he doesn't have anything Wednesday through Friday um, for writing. So that's not too bad um, for him. But this is what I will type and then I will print off for him. I also put a little note on each of them if it's something that needs to be graded. So if the assignment doesn't have something to grade that you know you won't see that. But for example, he has a lab on this date, so it says lab graded. So I know like I need to grade the lab for that day. And I'll just kind of highlight that section once it's been graded. That way I know that I've hit everything that I've assigned them that needs to be graded. So that's what my son's looks like. Now, my daughter's, you're gonna notice, looks a little bit different. She is, um, she has, you know, a math, a science, um, philosophy, and her English course, um, and I'll talk about their guest hollow courses um, here in a second, but she has fewer components that need to make up her schedule. So I asked her, I said, do you mind if I try tweaking the template on your planner this year and let's see how it works. And if it, if you end up not liking it, I'll put it back to the vertical route. She said, sure. So I actually created a template for hers that's horizontal. So again, days of the week, and then you see her courses on there. So I have her math course, her physics course, her philosophy course, and then her um, honors English 11. So I put this in here for her. And again, it, it was just, I just did it a little bit differently because her her courses are working a little differently this year. Uh, so she's got hers on a one pager and my son's is over a two page spread. Now, 
somebody had asked me, well, what do you do about the guest hollow courses? So I've, I've talked in my curriculum videos how we do guest hollow for a couple of different things. We've been using it for our history or social studies courses, and then my kids are doing an elective from them as well this year. And the guest hollow courses, um, they have usually reading components, they might have hands-on activities, they have workbook pages, they have videos. There's like a bunch of different things that you can pick and choose from that kind of create this course. Now you get sent like a PDF version of their schedule of like all of the options. And there's a Word document version of the schedule with, with again, all of the options. And so you can edit those if you so choose and print them out. Some people like to just print them out and like mark on there which things they want their kids to do. And then they'll have the kid follow along with that. Some will just have the document up on their computer and let the kids follow along with that. Um, again, my kids really like to have things kind of in a neat and concise format, and they like to be able to kind of highlight off things as they get them done. Um, I also like to take that information and put it into another format simply so I can see how are the assignments going to break down from day to day because I don't want to give them like one day where it's like, here's all of these things to do. And then the next day there's like just this little bit to do. I want to space the workout so that way they don't feel too overwhelmed on any one day. Or if I know a day is heavy for something else, I can lighten up the load in one of those courses. So with that being said, Within their planners, they both have their guest hollow courses in a format like this. Uh, and it's just printed on the back side. So here's my son's two day spread and then his guest hollow ones. And then my daughter's. So again, she's got her, her main courses and then you flip it over and there are her guest hollow courses. So what I have done on here is again, I made another word template. It's really easy you're just inserting basically a table into Word and then adjusting how big things are in typing within it. Super easy, you know, I just put in the days of the week, I put in the subjects and stuff, and then I just am adding things in. And I won't have to reinvent the wheel, you know, week after week. The template's saved on my computer. A lot of things don't change, like the names of a lot of the book titles aren't gonna change. I'm just gonna be adjusting which page numbers they're doing. But so you can see a little bit of how this breaks down. So for example, her government econ personal finance course, there are different reading assignments she's going to have and there'll be corresponding workbook pages. Uh, sometimes she's going to have videos to watch. So I will put the titles of the videos for her to watch. They're already bookmarked on our computer for her to do. Sometimes there's going to be printables and hands-on activities and she will need to do those as well. Then for their food science course, there will be Sorry, it's gonna go in and out of focus here because I'm trying to read it while I have it up there. But for food science courses, there will be reading assignments again from different books. So I just list the name of the books and what it is she needs to read and videos to watch. And sometimes there is a project. So like on Friday of the first week, they're supposed to make bread from any recipe they choose. So that is how I show them what it is they're supposed to do for their guest hollow curriculum. So again, that's kind of a literature activity video based curriculum. It's not, you know, sit and read just this page of this textbook and do these problems. There's a variety of activities for them to do. And again, being able to see it broken down like this is really helpful for me. So I can see if there are days that are heavy, then it can shift things around. If there's four videos that were recommended for one day and I think four videos for a day is gonna to be too much. I can shift those videos to other days. If there are reading assignments that seem like it's just gonna to be too much on that day, I can spread it out on multiple days. It's just really helpful for me. So we are going to try that format for their planners for the start of this year. And we will see how it goes. And if I need to make changes to it, I'll make changes to it. Um, now, as I did the last time I did a planner video, if you would like to have a copy of these templates, I am happy to share them with you. Um, they're just Word documents. And um, when I send off the templates, it's just a blank, blank spot there. And then you blank inside um, each of the boxes and you can go in and customize them however you would choose. So all you have to do is shoot me an email at my email address below. Um, let me know if you want the vertical format for the planner or if you want the horizontal format for the planner. Um, if you'd like the guest hollow format for the planner, just let me know what it is that you would like to have. I'm happy to share those with you. Um, 
if you would like to see the Excel planner that I use, so the one that I've downloaded and then I actually type the lesson plans in, I'm gonna link the video down below that talks about the planner and what it is that I put in there. So you can go back, you can watch that video and see it. And I will also include the link down in the description box for you that takes you to the website where you can download that Excel planner. It was a free download. I'm all about the free downloads, especially if they're ones that are easy for me to customize to fit with my homeschool needs. So totally recommend checking that out. So that's a little bit about how we got our scheduling figured out, how our planners are set up for this year. I'm really hopeful that this will work out well for all of us. Um, and if we need to make adjustments, we will make adjustments because that's the beauty of homeschooling is just being flexible. If you found this video helpful guys, don't forget to give it a thumbs up before you go. Consider subscribing to my channel so you can follow along with our homeschooling through high school journey. Have a great weekend. I'll see you in the next video guys.